Hi, this is Brian from SideFX Software with another Solaris Quick Tip. So I have here my test geometry, Capybara. This will be coming your way in Houdini 20. And I just want to change his display color in the viewport. Don't care about materials, just display color. So I have my select tool active, and I'm going to click on the mesh. And you'll see that opens up the scene graph tree to that mesh, and it populates this scene graph details pane. This has a lot of information in it that we often ignore because it's just information overload. But I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find Primvar's display color. This is a property that all meshes have, but it is usually not authored. I turn on my legend here with this question mark next to the other question mark. It'll tell us what all these colors mean. And we can see the display color has no value. What I can do here is if I right click on that and choose edit property or use the hotkey shift enter, I will get an edit properties lop over my network graph. You can see that is targeting the skin primitive and it's already loaded up the primvars display color in the parameter interface. So if I come over here and I choose this mint green, we see that indeed the display color has updated in the viewport. But I probably don't want to do this. If I wanted to make the entire character green, I don't want to do that one at a time for each of these things. So I'm going to instead grab the root node, whatever all of this is underneath, and I'll drag that into the primitives line. And now everything under this cappy primitive has gotten that display color. And if I look at my skin again, and again, there's a lot of information here, so I'm just going to filter it by color so that I can just see the information I'm interested in. See, I now have two primvar lines here. One of them has a default value, that's what the blue means, of green, and the other one is still authoring no value. And the reason we have two is, you can see we've got this little plus that we can spin down, and you can see that this one is actually coming from its parent, seeing characters Cappy. But let's suppose that I want Cappy in general to be green, but I want just his eyes to be red. I'll click on the eyeballs, and I will again edit this property. I'm going to use the Shift Enter hotkey this time, and that'll add another Edit Properties lop. And you want to be careful at this point because even though it's just added this lop, it didn't select it and load it into the, the Properties dialog. You can see we still got the green. So I will click on the Edit Properties lop, and now I have the eyeballs and they're black come over here and I'll make the eyes red and looking in my scene graph details that original green color line has gone away and I'm left with only the default value of red. If I go to say the fingernails I have what I had before green and a no no value value on the fingernails themselves. One other thing that is not really obvious here is the second half of the scene graph details. I'm just dragging off this pane over here. And this will tell us in the value tab what the value of that is. And for, in the case of something like this where we've just got one value, that's not terribly useful. But if we, I didn't need to open that. If we select, say, the vertices, face vertex counts. This can tell us something about an array, or if I choose the points, point locations. So this can show all of the information on that property instead of being having to try and interpret it from a single line that you see in the, the main scene graph details pane. The next tab we have here is the metadata. And this is very useful because it's got some information about things like the type of what it is, it, okay, we've got points in here. But more importantly, it has this documentation line. And this is pulled directly from Pixar's docs that tells us information about what this property is and how it's used. If I come over here to display color, it is useful to have an official color set that can be used as a display or modeling color. So, or we can come down here to subdivision scheme and that gives us a lot of information. I'm going to turn off the legend so we can see this a lot of information. 
including acceptable values for this. We've got two more tabs here that I'm not going to go into because honestly, I don't really understand them very well myself. But hopefully you can see that the scene graph details panel, although it is kind of intimidating with all of the information it has, how it can be useful for making simple changes in your USD scene. Until next time, once again, I'm Brian for Side Effects Software.